A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you. Let us be attentive. At that time a young man came up to him and said, Teacher, what good must I do to possess everlasting life? He answered, Why do you question me about what is good? There is one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones? he asked. Jesus replied, You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all this, what do I need to do further? Jesus told him, If you seek perfection, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor. You will then have treasure in heaven. Afterward, come back and follow me. Hearing these words, the young man went away sad, for his possessions were many. Jesus said to his disciples, I assure you, only with difficulty will a rich man enter into the kingdom of God. I repeat what I said, it is easier for a camel to pass through a needle's eye than for rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were completely overwhelmed and exclaimed, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For man it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Glory be to you, o Lord. Glory be to you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Slava Jesusu Christu. Beloved in Christ, in today's Gospel we find a rich young man talking to Jesus about a very important matter. This young man is deeply concerned about eternity and wants to know what he must do to achieve everlasting life. But when Jesus offers him with some very good advice, the man isn't ready to make that investment. Jesus wants the rich young man to take a good look at his present life, at his priorities, and start thinking about changing some of them in order to fulfill his desire for everlasting life. Part of what Jesus expects from him is sacrifice. It is misleading for this young man and us to think that salvation comes without a price. Remember the struggles the disciples went through and the price they paid for following Jesus. They gave up a lot for their salvation. Some of the disciples abandoned their homes and families, some their business to follow Jesus. Didn't Peter say that? We have left everything and follow you. What are we to have then? Jesus knew exactly what was important to this rich young man. This young man's biggest obstacle was that he valued his wealth more than God. So Jesus is testing him to see how serious he is about following him. In order for him to change the course of his life, Jesus tells this young man to sell all he has and follow him. Having said that, don't you find it odd that the commandment Jesus gives the rich man does not include the words, you shall honor no other God but me. Instead, Jesus tells the rich man to sell all he has and give his money to the poor. Why do you suppose Jesus left out that first and most important commandment? Well, Jesus actually does allude 
to that commandment but in a roundabout way. By selling all his possessions and giving it to the poor, Jesus was in fact saying, Get rid of your false God and accept the true God. Towards the end of the Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich man to enter heaven. Jesus knew that it is almost impossible for a rich man to give up his wealth even for life everlasting. Jesus said it like this, Where your treasure, if there will your heart be also. If our treasure is in this world, where a moth consume and rust corrupts, our life will pass away just like our treasure. In order to achieve eternal life, we must seek the things that do not pass away, that moths and rust cannot consume or thieves break in and steal. That is our number one priority. So, once we put our priorities in order and decide to live by them, then and only then will our lives change. That is how Jesus was dealing with the young man. After he advised the rich man to get rid of his wealth, his God, then Jesus beckons the rich man to follow him. Had the young man followed Jesus' advice and began worshipping the true God, eternal life would have been his. But he bows his head and walks away saddened. But he still has his money to cheer him up. So, what is it about money that can lead us to lose our salvation? Is money really that evil? When Jesus talks about money in the New Testament, it is done mainly with stories or parables, which show the dangers of wealth. For example, the parable of the seed and the sour. The destructive nature of wealth in the story of the rich farmer. But in our world, wealth and success are a measure one's worth. Christians are to recognize that God's kingdom is more important than money. God, the owner, gives us material wealth to use and to share with others in stewardship. Just because we worked hard to amass a sizable amount of wealth, we must not let that be a justification for spending it all on ourselves. At all times we are to keep in mind that we will one day give account to God for the use of our wealth. Our wealth must be God. Amen.